In this lecture, we will cover Scrum. First, we will cover what is Scrum. Then we will cover Scrum instruments and Scrum practices. And at the end, we will cover three roles defined in Scrum. Let's first see what is Scrum. Scrum is an agile management framework, and the framework looks like this. Where framework is made up of instruments and practices, and three roles are defined in it. Instruments of Agile are Sprint, Product Increment, Product Backlog, and Sprint Backlog. Scrum practices are Definition of Done, Time Boxing, and Transparency. The three defined roles are Scrum Master, Product Owner, and Development Team. Now we will cover each of these in detail. Let's see first instruments of Agile. First is Sprint. Scrum divides a project into iterations, called sprints, of fixed length, usually two to four weeks. Next is Product Increment. Each sprint results in a potentially releasable or shippable product, called an increment. Third instrument is Product Backlog. The product owner manages a prioritized list of planned product items called the product backlog. The items are called user stories. The product backlog evolves from sprint to sprint called backlog refinement. The last instrument is sprint backlog. At the start of each sprint, the scrum team selects a set of highest priority items called the Sprint Backlog from the Product Backlog. Since the Scrum team, not the product owner, selects the items to be realized within the Sprint, the selection is referred to as being on the Pull Principle rather than the Push Principle. Now let's see the workflow to understand how these instruments work in real time. First, the product owner selects the requirement which needs to be implemented. Then, the team selects the requirement from the product backlog, which they will implement in the current sprint, and this is called iteration backlog or sprint backlog. The cycle in which the sprint backlog is implemented is called sprint. Similar to this, the next sprint is selected and the process continues until all the requirement in product backlog are implemented and it is referred as product increment. Now let's move on to the Scrum Practices. These are the three Scrum Practices. Definition of Done, Time Boxing, and Transparency. Where Definition of Done is used to make sure that there is a potentially releasable product at each sprint's end. The Scrum team discusses and defines appropriate criteria for sprint completion. The discussion deepens the team's understanding of the backlog items and the product requirements. Next is time boxing. Let's understand this. Only those tasks, requirements, or features that the team expects to finish within the sprint are part of the sprint backlog. If the development team cannot finish a task within a sprint, the associated product features are removed from the sprint and the task is moved back into the product backlog. Time boxing applies not only to tasks, but in other situations, for example, enforcing meeting start and end times. For example, the retrospective would be a three-hour time boxed meeting for a project using one-month sprints. The last one is transparency. The development team reports and updates sprint status on a daily basis at a meeting called the Daily Scrum. This makes the content and progress of the current sprint, including test results, visible to the team, management, and all interested parties. For example, the development team can show sprint status on a whiteboard. Now let's see the workflow to understand how these practices work in real work environment. We will use the same picture for explanation, and in my last explanation, we saw how to create a sprint. Now the scrum practices are used in each sprint. First is definition of done. 
During the starting of the sprint, we have some goal to achieve. For example, our goal is to complete four user stories. Then completing four user story is the definition of done. And once the four user stories are done, we can say that the current sprint is completed. Now we have defined the timing for each user stories, which is referred as time box. This is to make sure work is completed on time. Complete process shall be done in a transparent environment, and to do that, we have daily meeting to know how is doing what and what is the status of each task. This is all about Scrum practice. Now, let's see roles defined in Scrum. These are the three roles. Scrum Master, Product Owner, and Development Team, where Scrum Master is the Scrum Master ensures that Scrum practices and rules are implemented and followed, and resolves any violations, resource issues, or other impediments that could prevent the team from following the practices and rules. This person is not the team lead, but a coach. Next is Product Owner. The product owner represents the customer and generates, maintains, and prioritizes the product backlog. This person is not the team lead, but represents the business point of view and makes all business-related decisions. And last role is development team. The development team develop and test the product. Before we end this lecture, let's have a look into a few more important points. The team in Scrum is self-organized. There is no team lead, so the team makes the decisions. The team is also cross-functional. Scrum does not dictate specific software development techniques. In addition, Scrum does not provide guidance on how testing has to be done in a Scrum project. With this, we end the lecture here.